This is our high contrast drawing project. Our objective is to explore the art element value and the principle of design contrast in a series of drawings using white colored pencil on black paper. So let's do a little review of the five elements of shading. So when you're shading a sphere, there are five elements that you need to really pay attention to to create a really realistic looking shaded sphere. So first is the highlight. So the highlight is the lightest part of the sphere. Second is the reflected light. So light will bounce off of the table or whatever it's sitting on and create this little bit of reflected light. If you don't add that reflected light, it's gonna look a little flat. Third is the shade. The shade is the overall local color of the sphere. So it's like your mid-tone. Four is your shadow. So this is a little bit darker than your shade, getting a little bit darker. And then fifth is the cast shadow. The cast shadow has absolutely no light. It's blocking all the light. So that will be your darkest. So you need to make sure whenever you're drawing, you have at least five levels of value. So we're gonna be doing white Prismacolor pencil on black paper. So we're gonna kind of reverse our thinking. So when you're doing this, you wanna apply the pencil in circular motions. So you want a smooth application and no hard edges. You wanna use light, evenly dispersed layers of pencil. You have to work slow and build up those layers. If you press really hard right at the beginning, you cannot take it back and you'll have to start over. It'll be too much uh, white values. So it's easy to add, impossible to take away. So this is reversing your thinking. So you're adding more layers to create light instead of adding to create dark. So you really have to make that shift. So the paper is gonna be your darkest value instead of in normal drawing, the paper would be your lightest. And then reference a value scale as you work. Make sure those all those values are representative. Like I said, you gotta have five for it to be real. And then also keep those pencils sharp. So keep a little hand sharpener with you and keep it sharp as you work. So you can see in this example, that is a very smooth transition. There isn't just a line. So we're looking for smooth transitions. All right, so you're gonna do, the first thing is a sphere. You're gonna do a sphere with a background. You're gonna use the nine by six paper. Um, you just use a little template to make your box. And then I have some uh, stencils. You can make your um, sphere circle. You're gonna create a seven step value scale. And I want you to pay attention to the value scale and the transitions. So take your time with this. Make it look as realistic as you can. You can see there's a whole bunch of different examples there. The second practice is to do a glass. So I'll have some options of little glass pictures that you can use. And then I want you to do the same thing, but now we're creating a glass. So you're gonna do that value scale. You're gonna look at the transparent object and you're just gonna start looking at what's a level three. Where does the where is the darkest or the the paper is gonna show through? What's a what's a medium level? What's a level four? And you're just gonna focus on those shapes that you see. And if you do that, you're gonna really impress yourself with how good it's gonna look. And then you can see there's a template. It's four and a half by 3.75. That's the size of the box I want you to draw it in. Okay, last, your final project. So your final project is you're going to set up a still life of glass objects on a black background. And we're gonna do use a really strong high contrast light. And you are going to create that value scale and you're going to draw exactly what you see. So remember, we're working on shifting our thinking, practicing smooth transitions, and you're gonna do a really good job if you do all these practice things. So I will have some references for you, but brownie points, bonus points, if you take your own photo, especially if you have like an interesting glass or something at home that you wanna use, but you can set it up in here and take a photo. My requirement though is that you need to fill the frame with your objects, so not a lot of dead space. And then as you need help, please ask, and then I'll have a couple uh, demo videos so you can watch me in action. I can't wait to see what you do. Good job.